Alright guys, what is up? This is Mihai and welcome to a brand new video. Now, you might have heard already that last week the next generation of consoles was announced by both Sony and Microsoft and if you intend or plan to buy any of the two, this video is for you. The release date for both is Holiday 2020, which realistically speaking with the current worldwide situation means December 2020. Microsoft has released pretty much everything regarding the new Xbox Series X already, except the price, which I'd estimate to be around $550-$500. It does seem to be quite a powerful gaming machine though, and some are even saying that Microsoft is trying to brute force its way through this new console war. The design? I'd say it's not the most forward thinking, it's basically a square black box, but if their claims about the cooling which is reminiscent of the trash can Mac Pro from 2013 are true, I think the user will get over that rather quickly. On the other hand, Sony has not released the design of the PlayStation 5 yet, so until further notice we'll just have to guess how the new console will look, or if it's even remotely close to the dozens of concepts which you can find on the internet. But what it has done is, they held a very in-depth presentation about the hardware and software technologies they'll be using, so in-depth in fact that some people have complained that this is too complex and they just wanted to see some games running on it. So before I'll go into more details about what Mark Cerny, the lead architect for the new PlayStation, presented, let's just compare the hardware specs of both the new Xbox and the PS5. Now, what we notice immediately is that these two machines are quite similar, and that's to be expected. They're both built on a custom AMD system, both the CPU and GPU, and actually this console launch is probably the most interesting one for PC enthusiasts as well, since ever, because we see here some technologies that aren't even available yet on the PC side. And one of those is the upcoming microarchitecture of graphics cards for AMD, the RDNA 2. Ok, so starting with the CPU, we find 8 cores, 16 threads of Zen 2 processors from AMD on both, and keep in mind this is the same 7 nanometers architecture that has been blowing Intel out of the water lately with their high-end processors, at a lower price even, on the desktop side. So both Sony and Microsoft made a great choice here. The GPU, as I was mentioning, is based on AMD's RDNA 2 architecture, which promises a lot. Here we will see a difference between the two, and the Xbox is a clear winner, at least on paper. Having 12 teraflops versus 10.28, and also 52 compute units versus 36. However, the PlayStation GPU will run at a whopping 2.23 GHz, thanks to the new architecture. And Sony's Mark Cerny did point out that not all teraflops are created equal, and that a higher frequency in games has a big impact, so maybe the Xbox has an advantage here, but not a massive one. Both systems have 16GB of GDDR6 RAM, and here Microsoft did the weird thing. It split the memory into 10GB of faster RAM and 6GB of slower RAM, which they say are reserved for the system, but even so, it's not impossible to imagine that it might cause some potential inconsistencies. And we arrive at Mark Cerny's favorite topic, and that is the storage, which will finally be an SSD. Out of the 52 minutes of Cerny's presentation, 20 were about the SSD, and can you blame him, it really does seem to solve most of PlayStation 4's problems. So here we have 825GB of storage on the PlayStation side and 1TB on the Xbox, but the PlayStation's is more than double the speed. In fact, it's faster than any consumer grade SSD out there on the market. And Sony hasn't just been throwing in an SSD in the new PlayStation and call it a day, they are rethinking not only how a game is loaded, but also how it's made and stored in the first place. More on that later, but also to be mentioned is that the PlayStation has a secondary internal M.2 NVMe SSD slot for adding more storage, while the Xbox has a proprietary 1TB expansion card made by Seagate, which we don't know how much it will cost right now. Moving on, both systems support an external storage as well through an USB interface, however keep in mind that this will automatically mean it will be way slower. Both have a 4K Blu-ray optical drive if you still use such a thing for games or films, and the video output for both is a maximum of 120Hz at 4K, but realistically speaking I think 4K at 60 frames per second will be the case more often than not, and also they do support an 8K TV. 
All right, so we already knew a comparison of the hardware won't tell us the whole story. So let's take a closer look at the technologies Sony presented, because as I was saying, they really deep dived into it. Sony claimed that one of the main principles that guided them in the creation of the new PlayStation is listening to developers, and that the most requested thing from them was, unsurprisingly, an SSD. Sony then went on explaining how a traditional hard drive works, what speeds it can achieve and comparing a PS4's hard drive speeds to their new SSD. This is all quite true and a big part of why hard drives are so slow is because information isn't stored all in one spot, but rather it's much more likely to be fragmented across the disk, hence this new delay that appears, the seek time. On SSDs this doesn't exist, so it happens instantly. Ok, that all sounds pretty good, right? But you might be saying, alright, but computers discovered SSDs 10 years ago. And while that is true, as I was mentioning earlier, Sony didn't just put an SSD in the thing and that's it. First of all, if their 5.5 GB per second claim is true, this SSD is faster than anything else available on the market right now. And if we do a Google search right now for the fastest available SSD, besides the fact that we won't find one as, as fast as this one, uh, the closest ones are expensive, very expensive. We're talking about 250 bucks for one terabyte. Small side note here, I estimate the PlayStation 5 will come out at around $500 for a few reasons, which I'll list a bit later. So my point is an SSD almost as fast as the one they have is half the PS5's entire price. So if you're trying to make a computer with similar specs, you'll have to double the final price, if not more, way more. Besides making an incredibly fast SSD, Sony is going way beyond that and they're actively working with developers to rethink how games are stored and loaded as I was mentioning earlier. So what that actually means is they have removed all other bottlenecks which could make a 5.5 gigabytes per second SSD much slower in reality. To achieve this they have also created a custom made controller of the SSD which helps with that a great deal. We are talking about essentially eliminating load times altogether. Just imagine how much easier the life of a developer would be when they don't have to consider the load times because the game just loads instantly. As you're turning around the map with your character, the game will be loaded and ready to go in a fraction of a second. One last thing to mention about the SSDs is that for the expendable slot, if you want to add a second one, you'll be able to buy a consumer grade one and upgrade it yourself for more storage, however the speed of it will have to match Sony's one, meaning at least 5 gigabytes per sec of read speeds, because all PS5 games will be made by developers counting on that speed of the SSD, so if you add something slower it might really affect the game's performance or Sony might not support it at all. The GPU, besides a lot more horsepower and efficiency when compared to PS4, also brings new technologies, a geometry engine and ray tracing support which doesn't even exist on desktops from uh, AMD currently, being a few of them. The next big thing they're spending a lot of time on is audio, and this might be the field in which they are really spearheading the research with other potential uses which are not related to gaming at all. They are literally analyzing hundreds of people's ear shapes and spectrums with the end goal of finally achieving through 3D sound without any expensive and certified uh, equipment or gear like uh, Dolby Atmos. They are calling this Tempest 3D Audio Tech. Alright, after we draw the line under all that, there are actually only a couple of things you should keep in mind if you are planning on buying a gaming machine anytime soon. First, if you haven't decided yet if you want a console or a PC, well, ask yourself this. Do you want to do anything more than gaming on, uh, on this machine? Because keep in mind that a console, no matter how good it is, at the end of the day it's just a gaming console. Then, if you are planning to get this for mainly gaming, uh, but you like to have more say into what components go inside and uh, you want to be more hands-on about it, well, unless you are very enthusiast about it, um, ask yourself if, it, if it's worth it because it will be at least twice the price to build a computer with these specs, so it doesn't really make sense from, from day one. Because as I was saying, um, the price will be probably around $500 and um, that's on purpose. They are losing money on purpose. Both Microsoft and Sony, when they are launching these consoles, they won't make any money. Maybe they might even lose some. 
but that's that's their strategy because they don't make money at first but then you'll have to buy their specific games you'll have to buy their specific uh, accessories um controllers monthly uh subscriptions if you want to play online so that's how they make the money not from the initial console price also my final point i promise um sony microsoft are you listening i've made a small survey of myself um, among people who would like to own a next gen console and um, i've asked them what they would like to see in the next console or what they would like to be able to do and uh, this is what they came up with so the first idea they came up with is a smaller form factor slash better design Uh, I I believe by better design they are mainly referring to uh, the Xbox Series X because many people weren't all that thrilled about the very simple design and boxy shape but yeah the second one is portable uh maybe even a return of the playstation portable um so yeah i don't think that's supposed to replace the playstation 5 but rather in addition to it uh maybe another newer playstation portable version that's an idea then then there's the idea of uh digital only uh to eliminate any um CDs, Blu-ray discs, uh, anything like that, and just buy games um, on the online store, which kind of makes sense, doesn't it? We're in 2020 already. The next idea would be uh, about the controllers. Uh, People pretty much love the PlayStation controllers. They are pretty good. Uh, But an idea of improvement would be um, to add some removable and washable pads for sweaty hands. (laughs) So I guess some people have problems with with, uh, sweaty hands. And um, it would be kind of cool if an implementation of that idea is possible. That's about it for today, guys. I know it's been a a bit of a longer video, and thank you for sticking uh, till the end. Uh, If you liked it, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to tell me anything, comment down below. Till next time, thanks for watching.